It's a good afternoon, January the 9th, 2015. This is CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology. And night today is the second class in the first week of the semester. So let's get started. So welcome back, first of all, to this class. And today I can see we have all six students here. Um, we went through the first class on Monday, only four students, or four or five, I forgot, only four or five, okay? And we just kick-started the semester and introduced to all of you on Monday that this is the environment you need to come back to at least three times a day uh, so that you can get yourself updated on the course, uh, particularly for each week we have a reading for each week, and each one of you is obliged to select a topic from this reading list on each week and do the journals on that particular topic. Okay, there are many topics there, but uh, it's going to be timed by the number of questions. So, for the first week, you can see that we have only two questions. The first question is, what is web technology and its impact in life? Very much consistent with the theme of this course. And the second question is, what is information privacy? Now, only two questions, but your job in each week is to select one question, okay, and then do some study on that question. How are you going to do it? Select one of these information sources. One will be good enough, but if you can do more than one, it's so much better. And then, so what you need to do every week is to select a question and select one information source under this question and do note taking, okay, and do note taking by reading the information source. For example, um, let me show you the, the work done for the first week uh, by Zihao, okay? I got one journal, that's a last Monday, and this is my journal, okay? But uh, Jiho, you should need, uh, you should know that you, you need to put your notes here first, okay? And then after that, you copy the notes from here to the public discussion forum, okay? Here we go, you did something in the public discussion forum. All right, so that is the notes you put there. But before you put there, you need to finish the journals in the journal link there, okay? And then you share what you get here. So this is Jiho's work. Uh, he actually got something out of the notes over there and to share that. Now this is the minimum requirement for each one of you in this course because you need to get yourself updated on the curriculum and my job here is to ensure that you do what you're supposed to do to get yourself um, equipped with the necessary knowledge that is expected of this course, all right? So that is what I've mentioned as of last time, but for those of you who are new to this class, you just come here today, make sure you study the syllabus here, okay? The syllabus tells you some expectations of the course, and in particular, uh, I have reproduced the syllabus using different links on a specific website, or what we call it a support website. So in this semester, we do have um, 14 widths, uh, with one extra width called the makeup class width. So you can see that this is the reading list. You have 14 reading lists, but for me, the first 10 widths are the most important, the first 10 widths. So in each of the first 10 widths, you're going to, on your own, pick one question from each of the wits reading this and study that question by selecting one information source under that question, just like this one here. Now you pick one question, for example, what is web technology and its impact in life, and you pick one source here. And if you pick this source, okay, how the web 2.0 has impact on our life, this is very interesting. Uh, article or something like this. Let's just go into it. All right. So you might got some information like this. Okay. So you study it a little bit. You take some notes. The notes depends on your focus. And I have given you all the freedom to create your focus. Okay. It does not necessarily to be the focus that is intended here because when you read something, you might got your own focus. Now, so that is the purpose, right? So you have 14 widths. Each week you have a reading list. So next week, the reading list is what is information technology and what is knowledge society? And you need to pick one question. And after that, you pick one source here and you take notes. 
Now, I will tell you one specific way to take notes that is intended for all of you, but at this point, just consider as a note-taking exercise, all right? So if you know how to take notes because you did secondary school, I will give you specific instructions in the following week on what is meant by note-taking in this class, okay? There is a purpose behind doing this uh, because I need to develop in each one of you some kind of ability to learn to learn, okay? That is a very key term. So for those of you who are new, you have to be aware that um, throughout the semester, we have three times to collect the work on you, okay? The first time to collect the work is on, I'm sorry, this is not an update of versions. Um, I need to give you an update of versions here. Now, don't worry much about the September one because it's brought forward from last semester. I'll give you the, uh, the date on the specific date for collections, all right? So let's go back to the calendar. Okay, the calendar. I need to update it because I just brought it forward. Okay, here we go. This is an update one, but only on the calendar, but not on the submissions, all right? You read this. So we have three important homeworks in the semester. Uh, we call each this homework, each of the three homework, a learning contract. So we can see that learning contract one, two, and three. So you need to get ready for the first submission, which is going to be done in the week number four. That means the fourth week of January. And what are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to submit? When you click on this link, everything will be shown here. But first of all, the second submission is in the week from March the 2nd to March the 7th. Okay, this is the second time you need to submit something. The last time you need to submit something is for learning contract number three, which is from March the 22nd to March the 28th. Okay, so three times I'm going to collect artifacts for you. And other than that, you do not need to submit anything. And then what you need to do is you need to do something on the website. And let's take a look at what you are supposed to submit in the first learning contract. Now, in the first learning contract, okay, you are reminded that you need to submit a journal, okay? The journal you did, you're going to do every week on uh, something similar to what you did, okay? But in a very specific format, you need to improve on that. The second thing is, once you have done your journal, you put your journal in a discussion forum. The purpose of this is you need to discuss what you have done with one of your fellow students here, at least one, okay? And we call that one is your learning partner, and you need to look it up, okay? You need to find a learning partner here. We have six, six students in this class, so we have three pairs. So definitely, you, you will have your semester-based learning partner of your own choice, okay? I will not assign randomly, but let you choose on your own. So you need to discuss what you wrote as the notes in the discussion forum with your learning partner in the context of exchange of written messages, okay? So in the learning discussion forum, you are expecting some feedback from your learning partner to your notes, okay? And what you need to do is you need to do the same to your learning partner because he or she is going to post something similar on the discussion forum. And once you see that posting, you need to engage your learning partner for the discussion. How many times do you need to do it? Well, it depends, all right? And after that, both you and your learning partner has to write a report on the topic of your choice, okay? Now we have four weeks for the first learning contract. It does not mean that you need to do four topics because one topic per week, right? But in the learning contract submission, you just need to produce one topic out of the four possible topics. Do you understand the meaning of that? You do not need to do all the four topics for the four weeks. You just need to do one topic out of the four topics in the four weeks for your report, okay? Now, because you do your topic, and your learning partner is going to do his or her topic, so in the report that you two has to submit, it's going to have two topics, one from you and one from your learning partner. The one from you, you have already finished the discussions with your learning partner. The one for your learning partner, he has already finished the discussions with you, okay? So that is the report, okay, by the two members in the pair, all right? And then after you finish the report, you need to come back to write something simpler for the topic you chose. And we call this 
a refractive rock. In a refractive rock, you do not just report on what you discover, you report on what you learn. Okay? So this is the topic you discover. You write some notes on that, you put your notes in a discussion forum, you engage your partner to discuss your notes. Okay? And after that, you collect the discussion detail and your notes and write your report for that topic. Your partner is going to do the same, and you put the two re two topics report together as one report because it's a report produced by two persons, all right? And after that, you go back and sit down on your desk and you write a simple refractive block on your topic. You do not copy directly from your report, but you write something more concise, less detailed, but more easy to understand. That is your lessons learned, all right? So you start with a topic, you journal the topic that is called note-taking. You discuss the topic with your learning partner, you come up with some discussion detail, you write a report for that topic, you combine your report with the report from your partner and submit that. And after that, you go back to sit down and write some refractive block on the topic of your own choose. And you already write a report there. Okay, these four important things are included in the learning artifacts of your learning contract number one. Besides, you need to come up with one proposal. Each pair contains two persons, and each person in the pair needs to come up with one proposal. Very simple. It's something you believe you want to do. You put a name there, and you come up with three questions of the proposal. What you want to study about that topic, and you come up with a paragraph, not more than 200 words, to justify the significance of that topic. Okay? And that is what we call proposal, which contains a name, three specific questions, and one paragraph. And then, definitely, you need at least three references which will support the topic. You look up newspaper, you look up uh, um, in the intellect, some topic or a blog, a site, which will support the investigations of your selected topic. And that will become the proposal. Individually, each member of the pair has to do it. And then, for the two of you, in your pair, you must have gone through some discussions on who is going to choose what, because you cannot choose the same topic as your pair partner. Each one of you must choose a different topic in here. Okay? So you have gone through some discussions here to negotiate who is going to pick what. And the discussions that you do normally is face to face, to face be it in class or outside the classroom or through the video environment, must be recorded as a formal meeting minute with the formats here. And you know that. Okay, so in other words, in the first learning contract that you're going to produce at the end of this month, it should contain one topic journal, a topic discussion details, a report on the topic, combined with the report from your learning partner, two topic report, and your refractive block of proposals and the meeting minutes. Okay? So you have four weeks time to do it. Now remember, just one topic, not four, okay? You can select any topic from any of the four reading lists in the first four weeks. We have four reading lists, okay? But remember, what is meant by one topic? Question. In each reading list, we have more than one question. You just select one question that represents your topic. Okay, are you clear? Very good. Now, if you want to know something about this, you know that you have one submissions to go by the end of this particular month, okay? And that is the submissions for artifacts in learning contract number one, okay? I'm going to change the date here, okay? I forgot to change the date here, okay? So, don't worry much about this. At this point, this is week number one, okay? So, week number one, with the themes called Coming to Terms with Web 2.0 in our daily living. Now, how do we come to terms with Web 2.0? Now, in order to answer this question, it's very simple. Uh, let me ask you, are you a Facebook user? Or are you a QQ user? Okay. What if, starting from today, you're not supposed to do Facebook reading or QQ reading for at least two days? So how are you going to keep your friends in touch? How are you going to know what your friends are doing? Without all the photos, 
without all the minute by minute uh, report of them where they are, well, then you can think of the situations of how you're going to come to terms with them two months ago. Facebook or QQ is just one of the very popular tools that we use today to keep in touch with people. All right? So think about this. Now, the theme of the first learning contract is called IBL. What is meant by IBL? Inquiry-based learning. And what is meant by inquiry? Inquiry means is questioning, which comes from the inside of you, not comes from the outside. Well, normally, when you come to class, in a traditional classroom, it's the teacher who's going to give you something based on the curriculum, and normally it's from the textbook, okay? So, normally, you are ready to receive a lot of things, but you may not be ready to ask, why I need to take this? Well, by tradition, you are here to learn. The teacher is someone who's going to transmit knowledge to you, so you have no questions about the transmission problem from the teacher. But when we come to inquiry, it's a little bit different. The teacher, as I'm praying this role as a teacher, I will not do as much as in a traditional classroom to transmit the knowledge to you, because I want you to discover for yourself what you have in mind. And that's the reasons why I use the word inquiry. And there's also the reasons why reading for each with is so much important, because in reading this, it's designed in such a way that all the possible topics in this course will be distributed on the 14 widths and mainly distributed in the first 10 widths. And your choosing of a particular topic or a question each week is your intention to learn that specific topic using the period of time that is given for the learning contract. What does it mean? In a traditional classroom, in each class and each week, you're supposed to learn something the teacher has laid out for you using a coverage-based approach. So you might learn three topics today, and you're going to learn three other topics next Monday, four other topics next Thursday. And then we come to a quiz, which you need to get yourself prepared for all the topics taught. And what does it mean? You don't have as much time to develop your real understanding of a topic in a deep manner rather than you need a service approach to memorize a lot of the things the teachers give you. All right? So in this particular context, no. Since I say that at the end of the first learning contract, four weeks later, you're going to do the first submissions, the submission represents a lot of things. First of all, it's the choice of a topic. Okay? It's just one topic instead of four topics. This does not mean that you don't do four. It means you do one topic using a period of four widths rather than doing one topic in the traditional sense using a period which is less than one width when you have so many topics to do with. So what does it mean when you have more time to develop your understanding of a particular topic? That that is the trade-off and that is the meaning of this design. Once you've already picked a topic of your interest, I want you to develop your understanding of a topic based on the criteria given here and based on the expected outcome you are going to achieve here. What are the expected outcome? Very good. Now let's go to the support side. This is the support website, okay, for this particular course. Let me see. Here we go. Okay. Now this is the support website for this course, Web Technology and Light. Towards the end of this, you see something called the GE Program Intended Learning Outcomes. The course learning objectives. The course intended learning outcomes. Now let's go for it. This is a general education course. In the context of the University of Macau, general education has a specific educational purposes. Um, let me tell you what the specific purposes are. Now, although we are under review, um, this purposes might be modified, but I have been using this seven important programs, learning outcomes, throughout the past four years. So, 
It does not change for this particular semester. If there is any change, it shall, it shall happen in the fourth semester this year. Now, at the end of your education, through University of Macau's general education program, we expect that you should be able to do number one, called the general education P program, I intended L learning O outcome. The program intended learning outcomes. We call it PIDO. The PIDO number one is you should understand something which is called subject specific knowledge. Now, in the context of this course, it's web technology and some issues in mind. You not only should be able to understand, you also should be able to utilize and use the subject specific knowledge to engage with question. Now, the question is what is meant by engage? The engaging question is an active process of learning. Now, to engage in question means you got some interest about something. You want to study that something for better depth, and so you spend time there, and you discover that those questions are actually enduring questions. Means forever true. Contemporary question also applicable to the modern world, such as why do we need technology? What if we do not have any technologies today? How are we going to live? Can you live without a computer today? Can you live without your refrigerator today? Can you live without your televisions today? Or can you live without the air conditioning system today? Can we live without a microphone today? Can we live without a screen today? Can we live without a video today? Can we live without email today? Okay, these questions make a lot of sense. And then all of a sudden you say, that, well, I came from China. I came from a very interesting area, which is a mountain area, where we don't even have electricity. Okay, that's good. That it's a different perspective. So the second thing is, the second point though is, you should be able to share ideas effectively in written format, in oral format, both in the formal situations and informal situations. What is meant by formal situations? Just like in a written exam. What is meant by informal situations? Just like over conversations in lunch. So you can write something, you can talk about something, but you can do this effectively. That means getting your ideas, of course, to people. The ideas related to topics of interest. The third program in kind of learning outcome is you should be able to manage your own learning and development. What is meant by learning management? What is meant by um, your personal development? Now let me tell you, um, but let me give you this question. You have gone through high school, all right? Uh, you spent about six years in primary school and another six years in high school. That is 12 years time in your precious lifetime. Now the question is, what have you learned? If I give you five minutes to tell people what you learned in high school, which is 12 years of the time, including primary school, what have you learned? What are you going to tell people in five minutes? Now, I'm going to give you this challenge uh, in the next class next week, okay? You're going to introduce yourself a little bit, and you need to include an answer to that when you come up here and pick up a microphone and talk to the, to the camera, all right? So, Learning management is you must have a way to document what you what you've learned over a period of time. Well, you can say that well look at my report card every every years of my study in high school, at the end of my study I have a report card. The report card says I'm excellent because I got all the high grade. Okay, that is the report card. Okay, but is 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 this good learning management? Well, people will say that oh I also learned Kung Fu. I also learned how to do calligraphy, okay, writing. I also learned how to dance. Okay, that's good. I also learned how to sing. I also learned how to play piano. Okay, that's good. Good album. But how is it related to your personal growth? How many of you know piano? How to play piano? You know? Do you know something about musical instruments? Do you know something about music? I know you know how to act. You like drama, right? Drama. Maybe, because I saw you act once. Remember that? You followed the drama course by the uh, QAT people, right? 
right? So you act very maturely. So how are you going to manage your time to do the learning in a way that you will always have the confidence and, and enough substance to tell people that, well, I spent 12 years in high school. I can tell you what I've learned. Now, you're spending the first semester of your four years college here at the University of Cal. How are you going to tell people at the end of the four years what you've learned? And what become of you? This is the initial stage. Four years later is the final stage. How are you going to tell people the difference between your initial stage and your final stage? What have you learned? Or what have become of you? And this is something you need to know through general education. Well, normally we say that um, students going through the college years will definitely develop the thinking skills that we call this critical thinking. Critical thinking is a very mature state of personal management when you can not tell a person what to do, unless he or she is willing to accept the task in herself, because he or she is going to find this meaningful for his life, okay? Um, put it much more simply, when I say that I'm exercising critical thinking, I'm doing something like, analytically, I'm putting things apart. I look at each component of something big, and I collect data on that. And then I try to put things together on my own perspective. Again, critical thinking. In the context of a vocabulary recorded, I try to analyze something, and I try to interpret something, and I try to come up with my personal conclusions of something. Okay, this is the free, important stage of critical thinking. And if you want to do it, the first stage is you observe what's going to happen around you, observations. The second stage is your questions about what does it mean. That is called interpretation. The first stage is you ask what should I have learned from this. That is called applications. So practical thinking is basically a process of maturity. Some people do it very quickly. In the process of conversation with a particular person looking at particular views, he's already doing an O, the I, and the A. Okay? And because of that, people should develop their perspective on how to solve problems. Problem solving is a very important skill. Each one of you should develop throughout the four years in college. Solving what problem? I don't know yet, because in your daily living, you are faced with different kinds of situations of concern. And each one of these situations of concern, there may be many different kinds of problems. For example, before I came here, I discovered that starting from today, Half of the underwater tunnel is closed for emergency repair. And I need to go to one side and share the lane with the other car going in the opposite directions. And I was told that today is a 50 kilometers per hour instead of 40. And then the sign is different. And I see that water is leaking on one side and just wondering what's going to happen to the underwater tunnel. So what am I going to solve the problem? I turn on the radio and I say, what is going to happen? No emergency news, or is everything is supposed to be right? So, uh, how to work it out is a little bit interesting thing. And then, part of number five said, you need to demonstrate. Okay, do you understand the meaning of demonstrate? Do you understand the meaning of demonstrate? Demonstrate means you do something which is related to that particular area. Okay, when I say that, you, do you know how to talk? Sure. No, it's not enough. Come here and talk to me. You talk about something, and I'm observe you talk about something. I know that you know how to do it. If you tell me, I know how to swim. No, no, don't tell me. Go into the water and soak it. Demonstrate, okay? That is the demonstrate. You need to do something. Demonstrate your ability to interpret and to synthesize a range of information examples. So in, in the real world of the technologies today, we have a lot of different kind of information bombarding us. When you go back to your email account, you receive a lot of email each day. If you have a Facebook account, QQ account, you have a lot of friends, and each friend is going to give you a different kind of information. And some of these information may not be true. Okay? And how are you going to interpret and put things together to make it sensible to you? So, um, and then, part of number six is you definitely learn what is meant by responsibility in a personal sense and responsibility in a social sense. The difference between this and that, that this is one person to yourself, 
this is more than one person beside you. You have someone next to you you need to be concerned with. And what is meant by responsibility? Something you know that you have the obligations to complete. For example, in this course of learning, you know that you have the obligation to complete your coursework so as to get a passing grade. If you do not complete your coursework, there's no reason you can ask for a passing grade because you have not done anything. So there's a personal responsibility. But in the coursework, if there, it involves a pair work or teamwork, you know that each one in the pair or each one in the team must have done something in order to have a passing grade. So you know that you can't just sit there and do nothing and let your learning partner do the rest because that way you cannot fulfill your social responsibility. And all of these based on ethical reasoning. What is meant by ethical? What is meant by right? What is meant by wrong? Not in a legal manner, but in a moral sense of the behavior. Reasoning is another word for thinking, okay? Action is not just thinking. Thinking is a steady mode. It happens right in, inside of you. But action is an active, um, active mode, okay? A dynamic mode, which you have to do something which is observable by people. Uh, typically, interpersonal competency is you need to talk to people to understand what others think about you or what others think about the situation. If you don't talk to people, just believe what's going to happen. You cannot understand what other people say. So it's interpersonal. It must be between you and the other. Again, we come back to the idea of engagement. What is meant by engagement? An active process of learning. Learning with the diverse community. You live in the residential college, and you're in SBC. In the SBC or any other residential college, you have to meet different people who come from different areas. Macau, Hong Kong, Taiwan, overseas, and you need to learn how they behave. And if you have a friend who are Muslim, you know that they have no obligations to, to pray every day in a particular direction. And you have to observe that. And maybe they do not eat beef, okay? Something like this. And you need to learn to respect others. They have different views from you. And the real world challenge is if you do not care about that, you're going to suffer a lot through this kind of personal failures because you do not have any respect for others. And finally, this is very important. The work integrity and applied learning is very important. Now, at, at the University of Macau, or just like in any other university, you have four years, you engage yourself in different courses of learning. In each course of learning, you have a different subjects. Okay? And how are you going to connect the knowledge you obtain from this course with the knowledge you are going to obtain from the other courses. Now, your professors will not be concerned with that because the professor's concern is, I'm going to give you the knowledge in a specific course. It's your responsibility to connect things on your own. Now, that is a difficult challenge. Now, the, the best thing about a university in Macau is when you live in the residential college, you have a chance to talk to different mentor, and they're going to share with you the experience to connect together, okay, through an informal environment. And in the context of academic teaching and learning, this is called integrative learning context. Integrative means putting things together, okay? What does it mean by putting things together? Because you want to apply what you learn. If you cannot apply what you learn, it makes no sense. So what you learn in class, what you learn from a specific topic, you need to ask for Application. That's why when we talk about critical thinking, we say there's different stages. First is your observations, the second is your interpretations, and lastly is how you're going to apply them as lessons learned. Alright? Let me take a look at the clock. Okay, I still have 15 more minutes. So these are the set of seven essential program intended learning outcomes for the general education program at the University of Macau at least up to this semester. Alright, so for this course. We have course learning objective. Now the course learning objective in this course, we just have three. And let me tell you what it means to have course learning objective, CLO. These are basically statements of purpose written by the teacher, me, uh, to provide the directions of the course. And these statements of purpose will give my students, each one of you, some idea of how I'm going to carry you along this course. I have only three purposes. One 
they have to understand something in the latest, or better say the relative latest, web technology, and we characterize them as web 2.0, okay, particularly in this internet era, and we are interested in the context of the impact of such technologies in our daily living, okay, the impact of such technologies in our daily living. That's why when you read the discussion forum today, I've sent out one example already this morning. Have you checked it? All right, actually, four together, together with yesterday's, all right? The second one is once you got some understanding of these technologies and some understandings of the impact of such technologies in our own life, I want you to create your own ideas to construct some of the responses you believe is important, okay? That is when I would like to see you and encourage you to formulate, to create, construct your own ideas, perspective, and not just create right here inside your brain without telling people. I want you to express the views, your views, after you have conceived those ideas, on how you can put things together in a much better manner, the web tools, to serve our daily living. Okay? You can support your ideas with some storytelling from the case study, which is a lot of case study for the reading list, some written work from the newspaper, from the internet, people's presentations, or including your presentation, as well as classroom discussion. Now, this is very important. I, I, remind, I remind you last, last lessons, uh, for those of you who are not here, I will really tell you again. In each subsequent class, in starting next week, I will open up at least 10 to 15 minutes time each class for individual of you to share your views in class, just like what I'm doing, picking the microphone, telling something. And you'll be given from two to five minutes time, okay? Any topic of interest, but it must be within the context of this course, okay? And each time, when you come here, pick up a microphone and share with the whole class your idea, it's counted as one record of the in-class participations, all right? And in the semester, I'm going to reward you for the numerous time you did that with 20 final semester points. 20 final semester points. 100 points is the full score. 20 is how many? One fifth. You just need to pick up the microphone and come up here and share with the whole class your perspective, okay? That is how I'm going to achieve that. And you will be rewarded. How am I going to do this? I'm going to do lecture. I'm going to show you discussions from the video. And how am I going to do this? Eventually, when you do a lot of things like this, I hope with different topics of interest, I can raise your awareness of the influence of web technologies in our life. Awareness is a very interesting term. Awareness could be your inner understanding of something. Awareness could be something you actually express outside. All right, so it's very important using modern living examples. Okay, so only three specific purposes. I'm going to help you learn something through lecture. You're going to tell me what you've learned through your in-class participations. In the process of doing that, we're going to do discussions. In the process of discussion, we hope to achieve this. Okay, three specific statements of faith. But I do have some expectations on all of you, so let's come back to the course intended learning outcomes. Now that is very important. In this course, we have six, all right? Six course intended learning outcomes. What are the course intended learning outcomes? Put it very simply, this is what I believe and what you should be able to do at the end of this course. You need to demonstrate this intended learning outcomes in order to convince me that you're fit for a grade, okay? So what does it mean? What does it mean? These are the evidence of learning. These are the evidence of achievement you are going to produce based on six different directions in this course, okay? In each one of these course intended learning outcome we call the cycle, it's something you need to elaborate on to produce evidence of learning or to produce evidence of accomplishment through 
a number of learning artifacts you can produce in the semester. What does it mean? Remember, you have something to submit in the learning contract one, in learning contract two, and learning contract three, right? So these are the artifacts. For example, you wrote um, a journal, which is the notes. Your journal for a specific topic is considered as a one learning artifact, something that is visible. You can pass it on, okay? You discuss a journal topic with your learning partner, you leave some discussions record in the discussion forum, you can copy the discussions record and submit it. This is another piece of learning artifact to demonstrate that you have done some discussions of this topic with your learning partner. You understand that? Now, you finish your notes, you finish your discussions, you come to writing your report on that topic, right? So you have the report. The report, it's again another artifact you can use to demonstrate you did something for the purpose of achieving some learning objective. So these are the artifacts. But the question is, once you've done all these, say you have done the free learning contract, you've done a number of artifacts, but how are you going to tell me what these artifacts are for? So you come back to this course intended learning outcomes, you try to tell me, okay, let me tell you that um, I believe in this course, I have done enough of conduct this course to make sense of IT today's non society. What is meant by this course? Discussions, okay? Written form or oral form. Conduct means do discussions. To make sense means to make me understand, to make other people understand the importance of IT in today's non society. How can you demonstrate you did it? Well, in first learning contract, I select a topic which is called IT in Knowledge Society. I wrote some notes on that. This is my first artifact that I've done some preparations there. I have shared my notes in the discussion forum, and I have discussed my notes with my learning partner, and later on with my group member, which is more than one pair, and then I can show you my discussion forum detail. And then, I've also used the basis of this work and write a report on making sense of IITs in today's society. These are artifacts. And finally, I wrote a blog, and I published my blog on this, this is my learning. So in order to demonstrate that I could achieve this silo, I could produce four important artifacts I just named. My journal, which is the notes, my discussions record, my report, and my bra. And what's more, I could produce later on you'll see a digital story of how I put things together. So you can read my digital story. So I could definitely tell you I should be able to do that. And I have done it. This is how you verify your ability to achieve that with the artifact you produced in the semester. Okay? That is how you meet the goals of our learning. Okay? So we have six possible sign those here. You need to read the sign those descriptions and ask yourself, have I done enough of this? With evidence, these are the learning artifacts I can demonstrate that I could do that. And I have done it. And so if you have done this, congratulations, you should be able to get an A. All right? So if you look at the, the way he's been trying to structure our, uh, our assessment, Okay, assessment. Here we go. So, do not forget the GE pilots, the course CLO, and course signals. Look at that, the way to calculate your score in the semester. So each of the learning contracts is going to give you 10%. At the end of the free learning contract, which is the end of the first 10 weeks, we enter the second stage of the semester, which is the next free weeks. We have 14 weeks. The next three weeks you're going to do the learning portfolio and normally you will have one more week extendable to the 14th week. And after you finish the learning portfolio, which is a combination of the learning artifacts which I just mentioned, based on the course intended learning outcomes, you will got 21%. Okay? So that is 50%. And what's more, it's in each of the first 10 weeks, if you follow my advice, 
to select one question per week and do your journals. For the first 10 weeks, you should have 10 journals. And for each of the 10 journals, I'm going to give you one point, so you have 10%. What about the other five? So you need to produce five specific blocks based on five topics chosen from the 10 journals. And you produce five specific blocks together with the 10 journals here, and definitely one more requirement, later I'm going to tell you, you will get the 15% here. That is 65%, okay? And then, in class participation, as I told you, if you, when I offer time for you to do your in class sharing, and when you are prepared enough to come here to pick up your microphone and share with all class for two to five minutes each time, and for the whole semester, if you have done 10 such sharing, for each sharing, I'm going to give you two points so you have 20%. So you can earn that 20% throughout the semester by participating actively in class to share what you've learned about what you did last week. Okay? And finally, we have the midterm exam, which is 15%. So it adds up to 100%. Okay? It's not good. We do not have any final exam. And we do not need any memorizations. Okay? Do you read me? So understand that. When you read the syllabus, you understand it. Okay, we're going to come back to that later. So, I have some time left today to share with you that the two things I need you to do. One, we have the first week of class questionnaire I just produced this morning. And I wish you to finish it before the end of this Sunday. Okay? Make sure you finish it before the end of this Sunday. By finishing this, I do not know who is going to finish that because it's an anonymous survey, but in the context of the questions there, I will ask you to print your name, okay? If I see your name there, I'll give you a bonus work towards the end of the semester, okay? I, I will not tell you how many points there, but normally it's just an exercise to reward you, all right? So make sure you finish this question there before this coming Sunday, okay? So that I can report to you the result next Tuesday, all right? And then I've also sent you a teacher's message um, yesterday. Read the teacher's message and get yourself prepared for next week's work. And in the meantime, I will give you one teacher's message per week, okay? So you can expect another teacher's message coming up maybe this Sunday or next Monday because your class is scheduled on Tuesday and Friday, all right? So. You can see that in the upcoming events on the right-hand side of the Moodle environment, this is the questionnaire which tells you when it's going to be closed. It's going to be closed at 11.55 Monday, okay? But I want you to get it done before the Sunday, all right? So make sure you complete that. All right, so the reading, you know it, um, the videos, okay, I'm going to show you videos today, but I want you to understand the meaning of active learning. So, study this. What is active learning? <clears throat> First, active learning involves teaching techniques that are something other than straight lecture. Second, active learning is not an entire project or assignment, but a much smaller task you give your students. However, a project or assignment can have several active learning pieces within it. Third, in order to consider something active learning, students must be doing something including discovering, processing, and applying information, not just listening to a lecture or reading a PowerPoint. Active learning can take many different forms, and instructors often use different strategies in face-to-face -face and online classes due to their differing approaches to teaching and learning. For example, in a classroom, the instructor might ask each student to turn to their neighbor and discuss a particular topic. In an online course, the same exercise can be accomplished using a discussion thread, document sharing, or instant messaging. The idea is the same, but the approach is different. So what about these examples are considered active learning? In our face-to-face -face class example, simply having students turn to their neighbor and discuss a topic is active learning. In the online course, having two students discuss the same topic via a discussion thread is active learning as well. 
Research shows that students learn more when they're engaged in active learning. It's important to remember that lecture does have its place in both face-to-face -face and online environments. However, during active learning, students are involved in much more than just reading or listening, and more emphasis is placed on higher-order thinking skills, such as analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. Further research has shown that students retain 70% of what they say and write, and they retain 90% of what they do. Compare this with the fact that students retain only 10% of what they read and 20% of what they hear, and you'll start to understand why active learning is so important. Now that we have an understanding of what active learning is and why we should implement it, let's look at some specific examples to give you a clearer picture of what constitutes active learning in practice. Let's take the example of a small group discussion. In a face-to-face -face setting, you might group students up and ask them to discuss a particular topic. While this alone is active learning, you can add to the exercise by asking each group to present their findings to the class in the form of a standard presentation, a radio or TV commercial, or a comedy skit. Now let's look at a small group discussion in an online course. You can group students into separate discussion threads and have them discuss a particular topic. Again, this alone can be considered active learning, but you can add to the exercise by having students present their findings using various Web 2.0 tools such as recording a presentation with a PowerPoint or Prezi, submitting a voice thread with audio and a series of images that relate to the topic, or present their topic in story format using Google Maps. As you can see, the possibilities are virtually limitless, so be creative. Both our face-to-face -face and online active learning examples cover the higher-order thinking skills of analysis and synthesis, but what about evaluation? In this example, it would be quite easy to hold a peer review of each presentation. In a face-to-face -face class, you can simply have students give their opinions on how appropriate each group's observations were and how well they presented the information. This should spur more conversation with the guidance of the instructor. In an online course, peer reviews can be held using a simple discussion thread or a voice thread. So what about these examples are considered active learning? In our face-to-face -face and online class examples, the small group discussion is active learning, as is the preparation for the presentation, the presentation itself, and the peer review of the presentation. Each step in the process is itself a distinct active learning strategy. Since students retain more information during active learning, Simply stated, active learning equals better learning. So here we go. You got some sense about what is meant by active learning. The reasons why I need to show you this video is because a lot of the time in this classroom, we need to engage you into specific activity like discussions, and that is part of the active learning process. Just like um, the parents know, know the the teacher. Teacher. just to make sure that that's not disturbed. Um, when I invite you to come here to do a two to five minutes sharing here, you're actually doing something for externalizing your knowledge. You accumulate previously and you share it with the whole class. And what is going to happen next after you've shared it? It is highly expected that the rest of you is going to ask some questions of your fellow students. What does it mean by sharing this? Because in doing that, you can engage one another in what we call meaningful discussions. Okay? So, what is meant by active learning to you? The teacher is going to tell you, now it's time for you to watch the video, pay some attention to that, take down some notes, and then spend one or two minutes to share it with your fellow student next to you. And then maybe the two of you as a pair will come up here to share what your conclusions of the discussion is all about. And then, what is going to happen next? Remember last time what we did, we invite you to come here to lift you're posting here and continue your conversations through the dialogue here and you can see how your fellow students look at your work and provide feedback. And do you understand the expectations? The reasons why we provide tools to track your learning here is basically this is the learning journal, you do it on your own, and this is the discussion forum, you do it with your learning partner, the rest of your students here, and later on if you look at the second wit and the third wit, you will discover that the tools you will get is increasing. Look at that. In the third wit, beside a public online discussion forum, you also have what we call a peer online discussion forum. Okay? What does it mean? Once you got your learning partner, the both of you 
is going to have your, your personal peer discussion forum that not anyone in the class could read, only two of you can read. Okay, it's very convenient. So, but definitely, one more time for those of you who are not here on Monday. In each week, I've installed what we call the Dr. Bats Q&A hotline. This is a dedicated channel for you to communicate with me just by writing an email. Okay? And it addresses the problem in that specific week. So, if any questions, write something here, just the way to use a discussion forum, and expect my discussions with you. All right? So that is for today. Let me come back to the attendance score. We keep attendance in every class, okay, just the same as in last class. So let me create attendance record for today first. attendance by doing a roll call, just like in a conventional sense, like the record sees of Alice is here, she just left earlier. Ruby, are you here today? Thank you. Uh, Zita, Jita, Jihao is here. Thomas, are you here? Thank you. And then it's Kelvin, okay, and Lucas is right here, so six persons in this class. It's a perfect class size for group-based project work. And I hope that you get used to this kind of method of discussions. And remember, engagement is the key word in this semester. So now let's get started in the next 10 minutes because we're going to start at 2.15 on web technology. Choose essentials. Normally, I use a lot of the videos from the YouTube they help to understand the meaning of a specific concept. So first of all, web technologies today, when we talk about it, we do not mean you are an engineer. I do not mean that you are a computer science student. We do not mean you are in software engineering. We mean you are typical users, a casual user. So for a casual user to understand the web technology, and normally we use the tools concept, the applications concept. And so May I just pray to this very frank explaining web 2.0? Seven minutes to help you to get some understanding on that. Okay, let's get started. <coughs> to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time, I'm going to talk about internet developments known as Web 2.0. Defining exactly what is meant by Web 2 is about as difficult as nailing a jelly to a wall. That said, most people agree that Web 2 involves making new and improved forms of online connection between two or more people between two or more online services or between individual users and software applications. Identifying these three types of connection also enables us to isolate the three key aspects of Web2 as being interpersonal computing, web services and software as a service. Interpersonal computing is about using online technology to connect people to each other in social networks or business teams. The key interpersonal computing aspects of Web 2 are therefore things like social networking sites, wikis, blogs 
and online video. Examples of these include Facebook and MySpace for social networking, Wikipedia, blog creation sites like Blogger, and video hosts including Kaltura and YouTube. All of these sites allow anybody to add as well as to access content, to leave messages and comments, and to exchange digital media, including photographs and video. Web services are components of online functionality that can be plugged together like a kind of digital Lego in order to create an integrated online offering or mashup. For example, many companies use the web service of a payment service provider, such as WorldPay or PayPal, in order to allow them to easily take credit card payments online. This results in customers interacting with two organisations that are automatically interlinked via the internet. As another common example, web services are also frequently mashed together to integrate a map and related data from one website into another. For example, the property website Rightmove integrates local information from About My Place, which in turn obtains its maps from Microsoft Virtual Earth. And as a third simple illustration, anybody can cut and paste a YouTube video embed link to create a web page that is drawing content from two sources, and with YouTube here providing the web service of video hosting. The final key aspect of Web 2 is Software as a Service, or SAAS. This involves application functionality being offered directly over the internet. In turn, user data and applications can then be accessed from any internet-enabled computing device. For some years, human resources and project management applications have been successfully offered over the internet by companies including Employees and Clarison. However, online replacements for personal desktop applications are now also available. For example, Google Docs is an online word processing, spreadsheet and presentation package available for free over the web. As an alternative, Zoho also offers a Microsoft Office compatible set of online applications, together with tools for project management and other business functions. As yet another example, Juice has launched a free online desktop that also enables people to access their files from anywhere and to share them with others. Many people are still dismissing Web2 as the latest marketing hype. However, this is probably only because they are unaware of the online service and application delivery aspects and are hence mistaking the concept as being about no more than teenage social networking. However, in terms of both business and computing, over the next few years, Web2 is likely to change the ways in which many companies will link together as well as the means by which many of us will access our data and software applications. Not least, the purchase and installation of expensive standalone software is likely to reduce substantially, and in turn this will impact on existing key industry players like Microsoft. As Google and other Web2 pioneers have shown, a new business model is becoming possible. This involves providing basic applications and services for free, and then charging a small minority of users for service support, customization, or association. One challenge ahead is to see how robust and more broadly applicable this Web2 business model may be. As Web2 takes hold, many companies will need to alter their online strategy. The old Web 1 business model was based around building a great website and just hoping that people would pay a visit. However, in the Web 2 age, it is known where most people go when they first log on, and this is to Web 2 sites such as MySpace, Facebook or YouTube. Inhabiting these magnet cyber locations where customers are known to be, 
rather than just expecting people to pay a company's own website a visit, therefore has to become a key online strategy. Hopefully, this video has given you an improved understanding of Web2 and its implications. For more information, please see the Web2 pages of explainingcomputers.com. So that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon. Okay, I'm going to leave you with a very simple exercise. I'm going to leave you with a very simple exercise. You go home and you study the 7 minute and 11 seconds video during the weekend, okay? And provide your note taking for this particular video. Alright, this is the beginning of your web technology study. I think the guy here explained it very clearly for three specific aspects of the web 2.0 and one specific conclusion statement. Now, all of you, do some note-taking, beside the question you select, do some note-taking of this in your journal, okay? And then, if you want to do it, move it to the discussion forum so that we can share, all right? So during the weekend, read this. Now, where can you find this? Remember, let me show you one more time. I will definitely remind you. Here we go, under Web 2.02, Essentials under date number two, okay. This particular link, when you click on this link, you will be brought to this page, okay. This is the page, all right. So I'm going to um, update this page a little bit, but it's the first video, okay. It's the first video, all right. So I will remind you one more time uh, in my teacher's message, and I hope to see some of your work done to discover what is provided in this x friendly Web 2.0 video. Just take it as a very simple homework exercise, all right? Can you do that? Thank you very much. So I, I think I'm going to stop it right here, it's 2.16. So welcome back to this class, and for those of you who are the first time here, I hope to see you again next week, okay? If you want to know who I am, I'm Dr. Bat, from the Faculty of Science and Technology. Okay, so make sure you keep me posed if you have any questions using the hot lights here. Okay, there's a hot light. If you have any questions, you can keep me posed. Okay, if you want to stay and ask me questions, I will be staying after 2.30. If you don't have any questions, but have to go to your next class, you're free to go. Okay. So that's it for today's CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology and Light, for January the 9th, 2015, the second class, day number two in this semester. Stay tuned until next week.